in this episode of Mind Pump. Yeah. So for the first 42 minutes, we do what's known as our introductory conversation. This is where we talk about current events, our lives, uh, and a lot of fun stuff. And then after that, we get into the fitness portion of the episode where we answer questions that are asked by our audience on our official Mind Pump Media Instagram page. So where it says Qua. Ask us a question. Just go there. Go underneath the Qua meme. Ask us a question if we like it and we pick it. We will answer it in an episode like this one. All right. So here's what we talked about in the first 42 minutes of this episode. We talked about impactful listener messages. We got a message from one of our listeners and apparently Adam's mm. bad attitude saved yeah. his soldier's life. Talking shit saves lives. I am not making this up. It's a true story. Then I talked about how Quentin Tarantino is not going to be changing or editing his movie for China. It's a big middle finger to one of the yeah, biggest markets in the world. Stand up to the man. Kind of cool. I talked about visiting my good friend Max Lugavier uh, over in LA to do a, a podcast with him. Uh, we talked about Brett Contreras. He was just in recently to do a podcast with us, and we really liked the guy. Glute master. I brought up the natural endocannabinoid system in the body. So I talked about how it operated, what it did for you all of the natural endocannabinoids. And of course, that turned into a common uh, a conversation regarding phytocannabinoids and their potential benefit. Phytocannabinoids are things like THC. You might know that from marijuana. But there's also lots of other cannabinoids, um, and a lot of them have potential health benefits. Now, one of our, bet our favorite products that's THC-free or extremely low in THC, so it's a legal product. It's based off of hemp, and it's full spectrum, so it provides lots of cannabinoids, not just CBD, but others, is NED. NED is the maker of high-quality hemp oil extracts. And we have a discount for you. If you go to helloned.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then I talked about another paper on the longevity benefits of strength, of being stronger. Mm. Adam talked about how this is his absolute favorite time of the year. Justin talked about his rat problem at home and how they're eating all of his pumpkins. Um, and then I mentioned Bastards. how Doug is the expert mouse killer. I talked about how Jessica freaked out because it was a spider in the bathroom. We talked about the show Righteous Gemstones. It's absolutely hilarious. Yes. And then we got into the fitness portion of this episode. Here's the first question. This person wants to know what the difference is between grass-fed meat and wild game meat. So what are the differences what are the health benefits? And this turned into a conversation about the benefits of grass-fed meats versus grain-fed meats. Now, one of our favorite companies to work with is ButcherBox. And what they do is they deliver to your door grass-fed, high-quality meats at ex excellent prices. And through Mind Pump, they have an incredible promotion right now. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash Mind Pump, with your order, you'll get a free 10 to 14-pound turkey and... $20 off your first box Hello, of Thanksgiving. meats. Here's the next question. This person says, what's the point of getting a pump? Like, does it promote more strength or muscle growth? So this is when you work out in the gym lifting weights, your muscles get filled with blood and they feel real tight. You get swollen. Is that just something that looks good or is there actual benefit to it? The next question, this person wants to know, what effect does cons consistent resistance training have on type 1 diabetes? And the final question, are humans hardwired to be competitive. Also, this month, this is the only yeah. time we do this promotion all year long, our most popular muscle building and metabolism boosting program, MAPS Anabolic, is the one that we've sold the most of, is 50% off only in this month of October. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsred.com and use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space for the discount. So yesterday, well, first I got an email from uh, Ann, and you know she'll every once in a while she'll send over she goes through I mean all the the customer service stuff that we get right so every once in a while we get somebody who just sends in like a, a really nice letter and uh, yesterday we had got one uh, that she'd sent over and I was reading it and I, I have a hard time with reading these they get they get me emotional dude because some of the things that people say like this this guy had a, a daughter um, who's uh, committed suicide at fourteen years old and. Um, put him on that path, uh, the same thing. And he said two years ago, he had just kind of stumbled across our podcast. And, you know, after two years of listening, started to put into practice a lot of things that we talk about on the show. And, 
you know, was basically thanking us and saying that we saved his life. That's the one that I read. Yeah. That That's crazy. Super powerful. That's same, super crazy. Same, so I'm like literally just, I was sharing that with Katrina. Same time I'm going through and like my DMs and answering questions and stuff, trying to get to as many as I can. I get this other one like same day. And this one's like powerful and funny at the same time. I thought I had to share this. And it says, hey, brother, this is pretty random. And I don't know when you're going to get time to read this, but you've, you've saved lives. He says, we took some pretty rough fire today, and one of my best friends got hit uh, by an AK-47 round to the chest. Oh, so this is a soldier. Damn. Yeah. Wow. While I was tending to him and then pulling him out of the kill zone, he said he was scared. But he then told me that he had hurt. He, <clears throat> he then told me that he had to hear you roast Sal for being a nerd one more time. No. <laughs> Shut up. That's what? right, bro. Save lives talking shit Shut about you. <laughs> bro, it's all, hey, bro, yeah. there's a reason for everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I always yeah. think, I was just thinking to myself the other day, like, what could the possible reason be for Adam's asshole yeah. attitude? Like, what's the good? Saving lives, dog. You just saved his fucking Save divine lives. intervention. No, he's like, believe, badass soldier. I believe the only reason he's alive is because he's too fucking petty to not hear you at least one more time talk shit. So... Uh, and he says, I know you understand that you're doing for the fitness community, but on a personal level, you've reached out to my troops and you, Sal and Justin have impacted all of us on oh. another level. Thank you. I thought that was really cool. Oh, so man, to be, to be powerful, to be thanked by, by men and women who are going out there and putting their lives on the line is just, yeah, it's not, I'm, I don't feel worthy to even be thanked no, by these, it's these a special people. place for me, for anybody yeah, who's that, serving for us. That's fucking awesome. So dude. shout out to Sergeant Roda. How do I say it? Rodoya. Doug? Rodoya. Rodoya. <laughs> You did fuck it up. I knew I would fuck it up. I'm <laughs> telling you, you know the names. So, shout, dude, out, shout out to my dude. That just goes to show you, like, you know, how tough these people are. Like, you just got shot, and yeah. and you want to be, you want you send out some humor. Yeah, you know what no. I mean? Because you 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 know you're, you're looking at your friend, and you're probably like, oh, oh he's scared well, for he me. he met we were mess we were messaging back and forth. I was like, I can't. I almost missed it. So that was a message sent, I think, like a week ago, and he had just shared like a squat and scroll. And every time I see the squad and scrolls, I try and throw them up as soon as I see them uh, and give love to everybody that's that's you know spreading the message. And uh, I had clicked on it, shared it. It pops back up in my inbox. And then above, I see that he has messaged me like two other times. And here's this message. And I think it's like a week old. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God, bro. Somebody sent me this and I didn't even see it. Which, yeah, man, I tell you what. Um, anybody who's, who's, who's messaged me anything that uh, I haven't got back to, it's just... It's impossible. It's a hundred percent impossible, and I do my best to try and get to as many people as I can. And it's kind of a sad, 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 and good at the same time, right? Obviously, it's it's good for business reasons that we've scaled to that level to where we are getting that many, you know, emails per day, that many DMs per person. But it's also a sad day for me because one of the things I think that we all prided ourselves on when we were building this thing was that we connected to all of our people. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we we were able to talk to every single person right. at one point. You can just do your best, you know. You just do yeah. do as, as good as you can if it gets it gets out of hand and it's impossible, but you just do your absolute best. But man, I mean, we appreciate it. We appreciate the hell out of it. You know what else is I uh, speaking of soldiers, I learned this a long time ago. Um so I don't know if this is true, but I I think I read this in an article that some soldiers were using um tampons for bullet holes. So they'd get shot, they'd have a bullet hole, and apparently a tampon is an incredible way to stop the bleeding real quick. They'll stuff it in the in the hole. Have you guys heard of this? I have not. <laughs> I mean, Maybe. it makes sense, but yeah, that's uh, I don't know if being this resourceful. Is, I, don't, I don't know if this is like, I read an article a long time ago, and the way my memory works is, I, I remember the, 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 the reading it, I don't know if it's true. Maybe I feel like you're doing a commercial right now for like, yeah, you know, we got yeah. Tampex. By the way, we're yeah, sponsored yeah, by yeah, 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 Tampex. Yeah. Saves lives. Yeah, Tampex saves, saves lives. lives. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, but maybe Doug can look it up, but I remember reading it and thinking- At well, a that's, CVS near you. That's brilliant, right? Because it's the way it's oh, shaped. Yeah. It you makes know? perfect sense. It's uh, and it's kind of designed to <laughs> to, you, to you, kind of do that to, to go in a hole. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Let me yeah. see. No, that's not what it says, Doug. I, yeah, I think he's making this one up. No, Doug. dude. For gunshot wound, click on that. Tampons are not sterilized. Not really a need for them. Clean and free for breeze. Yes, but when using, it's obvious that a tampon doesn't come close to filling. Well, I know a they used room. to use like super glue for cuts and like yeah. and like, stuff like that. Sounds like, so, shit. sounds like something you saw in a movie and then thought it was interesting. Oh, here you go, Snopes. Let's see, Snopes. Uh, see, numerous soldiers have told us that, yes, tampons are indeed carried in medical kits and are, are used on bullet wounds well, in the field. 
That makes me feel better when I have to go buy my wife tampons. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, this, this is for the bullet holes. This is, yeah. <laughs> you never know what's uh, what's out there. Yeah, right? you look hell There's snipers in the you're bushes. All, you're all embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Wear, yeah. Your, wear your camo hat. It may, guy, it may save your life one of these days. The guy's you know looking mean? at you, you know, like, yeah. oh, oh, these are for the this is for the gunfire. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be under later. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? All those bullet holes. Yeah, it's not like, uh, I, I'll use this up tonight. That's how yeah. crazy it's gonna be. I'm not doing errands for my wife. Twelve bullet holes, you know what I mean? Anyway. Dude, I was uh uh, did you guys read what's happened with uh, Quentin Tarantino? No. So I did not know this. Makes obvious sense. It's ob- it's logical. But a lot of movies um, and entertainment in the U.S. has to be modified and changed. Like entire scenes of a movie have to be changed in order for it to be distributed in a country like China. Because China, as you guys know, is communist, so they control a lot of things. Of uh, they, they really try to control yeah. what their population sees and whatnot, more so than than most countries. And so what they'll do is they'll screen a movie, and then they'll say, "This part has to go." This, this part and, and, and and replace this. For example, there was a scene in the Avengers. I don't remember what the scene was, but in order for the Chinese government to approve the Avengers to be released in China, and that's yeah. a huge market. China's the second. Like largest they just market. like deleted Captain America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Captain like, China. This, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it turns to Captain China. No, they had. Um, there was a scene in Captain America, and excuse me, in uh, the Avengers, where they had to add. They shot an entire scene where there was a Chinese doctor helping some of the people, and then that's the only way that they would approve it. So they had to make a whole scene with this <sighs> Chinese doctor. That was what? Yes, and it, it replaced another scene. Anyway. Mm. Quentin Tarantino, his movie, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I think it was. Yeah, I never saw that one. Yeah, so I saw it was boring. I think it's. I think that's the movie that they're talking about. China asked him to change a bunch of stuff, Mm -hmm. and Quentin Tarantino said, "Fuck you." And so he's not changing any of his movies uh, to be viewed uh, to be shown. In China, that's a lot of money he's going to lose too. No, that yeah, is, yeah. More filmmakers need to be like that, yeah. though. Well, I mean, think about it this way: like, y- it's easy to say that. That's hard to. It fuck. is easy to say that, but I mean, it's when, that. That's the true artist and like the true. Yeah. You know, like if you want to put it out there, I, I just love to see like real art out there, not just like the commercialized shit that you know they're literally doing it because those. That's a huge market. They have to play those games. Well, huge you, market. You're talking about like doubling your income. At least, that's what I'm saying. It's not more. Some so, movies gross more in China, right? So that would be that would be tough, man. You you make this blockbuster movie. Plus, you're making you a, a product. Run, you you hit a home run here in the mm-hmm. states, and you know all you have to do is switch a few Just things. A few out. things. Yeah. For me, it would depend on what they ask me to change because I get that it's a product, and you mm-hmm. have to change the product for different markets. Like I have no problem, obviously, producing something in a different language right. or. You know, you have to change certain things just to get the right rating if you want to be PG-13 or rated R. Um, So I get it, but it depends. Like if they said to me like, yeah, we'll do your movie, but uh, let's take all the American flags out. You know, then I'll be like, do you guys prefer having subtitles or having them like uh, just dubbed over? Subtitles. Subtitles. Yeah. Yeah. I hate. I don't know how you can watch a movie like that when yeah. it doesn't line up. Uh, I watched, it drives me crazy. I did watch one like that. Um, what's the show? It's actually the second season came back out. Um, I think I, I think I, I think I got you guys watching this. I thought for sure. Oh, yes, yeah. I know what you're the talking German about. One? Too. Yes, yeah, the dark. German one. Dark. Yeah. Dark. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't like dubbed. The only time I like dubbed is and probably because I was raised. Watching them dubbed or the samurai old, uh, old kung theater. fu movies, yeah, old kung fu movies, yeah, those are fun. Well, because you add your own uh, dialogue. That's <laughs> yeah, what I do. it's just the, the yeah. fake, the fake. Uh, yeah, the sounds of punches yeah. and you kicks. You just gotta add it yourself. You're, you're, well, you it's see a the lot punch. More fun. The punch hits, and then like a split <laughs> second later, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, this, yeah, that hits went so Two fast. Blocks. Yeah. <laughs> went faster than the speed yeah. of light. How was uh, <laughs> how was your visit with our boy Max? You went and saw Max oh, yesterday, bro. I love that guy so much. He's such a... He's a champion. Bro, he's like... Uh, you ever meet someone and you're like, wow, we're very much alike uh, in very weird ways. Well, didn't yeah, we agree Max. that if you were to die that that's who we would use? Hey, I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, Isn't that the... Uh, I, so you signed that, that contract. Third Amigo yeah, would be. And him, yeah. him and I have a really good chemistry. Like anytime we're on uh, uh, video or you know audio together, yeah. we flow very, very well. Like I did that one live... I heard he got a bunk bed. Uh, huh? For you, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah you guys got a bunk bed. He's such Stay a ba- down there. He's such a bachelor too, and you yeah. see the way he the way he lives and stuff like that. Like yeah. He's such a yeah. But anyway, um, great chemistry with that guy, and we always do a good job together uh, when we talk about a particular topic. So I was on his podcast, and we talked about like the 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 value and non value of counting calories and macros, and that got real deep. 
Then we talked about uh, Game Changers, the documentary, because right now it's going crazy. Oh, yeah. And um, he's getting hammered by the super, you know, zealot vegan crowd, and he doesn't understand it. He thinks it's, you know, he thinks it's absolutely crazy. So we talked about that for for a while. But it's funny because uh, I posted a couple Insta, you know, Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm here with Max or whatever. Bro. At least <laughs> five thousand girls. At are least, like, yeah. oh my god, could you like? Uh, I don't know, connect dude, us. It was like I think he's America's number one health and fitness bachelor. Dude, oh yeah, fit, wouldn't you say that? I'm telling you, it was like fifteen or twenty women, uh, you know, girl, you know, commenting. I love him. Oh, he's great. Oh my god, I love him so much. Heart, yeah. you know, heart yeah. eyes with heart, whatever. Like, oh my he's god, so this smart guy. and cute and awesome. And, oh my god, yeah, dude, it's cra yeah. it cracks. Me yeah, up, I bro. get it, dude. Isn't we, it funny how people don't even know who someone is and they're like, they get so fanatical you know what, like that? Yeah, but you what know if what? He it kicks is? like small puppies and they don't even know that he yeah. kicks puppies. Wow, that would <laughs> that'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Why, Max? Why? <laughs> You're hanging out yeah. with him, you know, and, he, and you know, he's, <laughs> just he's kicks, like, I'm doing so many good things. I do one dark thing, you know. I just have this one thing. It's like, whoa, dude, what was that for? I kick puppies. He's like, I got something to tell. I got this hobby. Yeah, you know, I know we're close. Yeah. Uh, I like to kick small puppies. I was never supposed to get out, but I kick puppies. Re ah. Reversal of yeah. all the things I thought about you. Yeah. No, he's a, he's a, uh, I'll tell you what right now, man. I, I, I understand it. If I had a sister that was available, I would for sure <laughs> fucking. We're going to bust him down. I yeah. would close yeah. him on being in my family because uh, yeah. he's yeah. such a good guy. We'd, we'd be competitive with that. I'd want to get the rose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to compete. He for took Max's me, love. He took me to Erewhon. Have you guys ever been to Erewhon? In, yeah. Uh, you Alabama? know. Yes. Remember? Christina just like Every Raves Everybody, about it. it. It's overrated. No, no, hold on a second. It's like but we've it's never like whole, been there. Yes, we have. It's like Whole Foods. We, like we didn't Foods. go there. I've been there. Yeah, dude, I've, L.A. Yeah, I've never been there. It's like the. It's the. I guess there's even even more posh version of Whole Foods, even though I <laughs> dude, Whole Foods yeah. was already. It's like posh. Whole Foods was more expensive, dude. Yeah. So we, <laughs> wait for it. So we go there, and he's telling me about it. First off, they are fucking rad. They have a juice bar where you could get drinks that are like with all these crazy herbs and plants and shit. Yeah, but some of Whole Foods are like that too. No, no. Whole Foods does not have fucking deer velvet antler and shishandra and, you know, cordyceps that they'll put in your... They don't have all that. Wow. This place did, and so I bought a I mean, drink. That is exotic. I bought a drink called Jing Booster or something like that. Jing Booster. And I looked at all the ingredients, and it was definitely designed to give you the boner power. Hey, you know oh, is I mean? that what it's for? Yeah, for sure. So I, I full full salute. I had a cup of that. So that's interesting. You wouldn't had that before you and Max podcast. No, no, by no. Yourself. It was uh, the podcast. I was glad you caught him on that one. That was an interesting that choice is, of drinks. There, it was after. Hey, give me the boner hey. drink. I'm about to go hang out with my buddy. I want to be excited, <laughs> but like not just excited, really excited. Yeah, I want to be able. Yeah. To, I want to move that one's for you, Gavin, without my hands. Yeah. No, no, no. It was it was after we podcasted. Okay, for the record. Record, I don't need Jing Booster before I meet with Matt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just not something. It's just a natural yeah. thing. Hey, speaking of cool people, yeah. um, the podcast we did with Brett, which is going to be released later on. I really like. I really like Brett. You He's know what a good I, guy. You know what I like about him? Most? I forgot that you were a dick to him. The glute man. Yeah, a long time ago. I forgot. He totally, uh, I felt like he was a little nervous at first, and I thought, I wonder why he feels that way right now. Like, I think oh, we're really- Sal's fault, I guess. And then right? I remembered, like, oh, that's right. Sal was a dick to him on Instagram. I wasn't a dick, bro. I was- I think you- I challenged him. You and Shallow got after him one time. I challenged him. I wish him. I remember what it was over, though. I don't know. We mm. were trying to figure that out. So he, I think he came into the studio thinking that we didn't like him. No. But I, I must have been like- uh, like hip thrust versus squat, like which one was like in terms of like athletic performance. I think that's what it was. I think it was, and I, all I did was challenge him. And and if you guys recall, Brett came back extremely intelligently, yeah. um, with lots of integrity, provided studies. Him and I went back and forth with a good debate, and then I thought to myself, I like him. And and I, look, when I go, yeah, up, he's very measured. Yeah, when I want to debate someone on on social media, it's not because I honestly want to be an asshole. It's, no, I'm busting your balls. Yeah. I think the uh, the approach that we we have, and I told him straight up. I said, you know, one of the things we like to go challenge a lot of the PhDs, and not because we were trying to be a dick, but because it ends up having, a, for the most part, a really good, intelligent yes, conversation. And that's what he does. Yeah. And here's what I like most about him. I was just talking to Jessica about this. The thing about Brett Contreras that I really appreciate, and we we learned this through the podcast, is he's been a personal trainer for a very long time. Yeah. So he. Well, you can tell by the way he answers. That's yeah. it. That's hundred percent. Yeah, you can tell by the way he answers every single thing that we talk about on the episode that's coming up with him, and and even the way he posts. Like you, 
I felt that from him when we were we were talking about stuff. He will he would reference a study, but then he always talks like, well, in this case, yes. or, or there's always exceptions to the rule. Like he's really careful to, and you know that because what did he say? He is his three. He goes. Uh, he goes. I'm a personal trainer first. No lifter for lifter first. A lifter first. Personal trainer second, and, and then third a, a scientist. That's right, and I like that because uh, there aren't a lot of great studies um, done around exercise. There's, the sample sizes are typically not big or uh, biased. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, till this day, the most you'll ever learn about fitness is if you go out and train people for 15 or 20 years. There, yeah, there's just not a lot of money in research in like fitness in, yes. in general because it's just like, I mean, there's no, they want to create the pill. They want to create the pill to get you all the results. They speaking don't want to of, study it. Speaking of uh, in, in fitness space and the pill and like, man, I think, I don't think I've ever seen so much CBD oh God. stuff hitting like I mean my thread is just yeah. flooded of everybody pushing and moving CBD right now. Are you guys seeing this right now? It's, oh yeah, dude. It's so everywhere. St- it's I mean, so you can't, stupid. You can't avoid it. It's so overplayed and they're promoting it for things that it has no evidence that it benefits. It's just a cool, yeah. you know. Actually, you remind me. I I was uh, uh you know because I was in LA um uh, you know inter- being on Max's podcast. I was also on Mike Catherwood's uh, new podcast. He's oh, a, how was that? He's a cool guy. Super, super cool guy. Did um, you talk to him about training with Josiah at all? No, no. We we, I, we sat down, podcasted, and then he had a podcast right after me. So I just I, I, I talked to him for a little bit, and then I had to take off. Uh, okay. Mm. But very, very cool guy. Nice dude. Um, you know, he's been working out for a long time as well. But anyway, uh, because I was there, I had these gaps, you know, in between the two podcasts. So I actually sat down, had lunch, and had like two and a half, three hours to myself. So I thought. I'm going to learn more about the endocannabinoid system uh, of the body. Because that's total nor- totally normal. Yeah, I do yeah, that all the time. Yeah, so. light reading. Yeah. Um, so the endocannabinoid system is the, the body's natural system uh, that utilizes what are known as endocannabinoids. And we only the only reason why we ever discovered these in the first place was because scientists were trying to figure out how the hell THC makes people high. Hmm. So way back when we discovered you know THC, or not discovered, but yeah, discovered THC, we were trying to figure out how the hell does this make people feel high? We can't figure out the mechanisms. Through the process of studying it, we discovered receptors in the body that THC attaches to. Um, I don't know if it was the CB1 or CB2 receptor we discovered first, but it was one of those. And then from there, we're like, okay, if these receptors are here, there has to be a natural chemical in the body that attaches to these receptors. And so they, they looked and looked and looked. And for a while, it was like, you know, theorized that we had it, but they couldn't figure it out. Anyway, eventually they discovered these natural endocannabinoids uh, that are in the body. There's there's five, I believe, that we've identified. I actually have them written down. Anandamide, that's the first one that I think I bring that one up quite a bit. There's something called 2-AG. AG stands for arachidonyl glycerol. There's vir- virodhamide. There's NADA. And then there's one called noladin ether. So these are all the natural cannabinoids your body produces that uh, work throughout the body. And these are the, these are the things that we really fully understand that they impact in the human body. Because you think, well, what are these things for? Why do we have them? How do they regulate the body? They work through the body's uh, pain and inflammation system. So it's an important part of our, of our body's ability to modulate pain and inflammation so that it's appropriate. Because remember, inflammation isn't good or bad. It's it's if it's appropriate, then it's then it's good. You need inflammation to signal the body. Too much inflammation can re- can wreak havoc on the body. Right. Feeding and energy regulation. So hunger, appetite, but also oh, that's interesting. Also, how your body regulates energy. So cannabinoids can actually tell the body to burn more calories or burn really? less calories. Yeah. I this may that. be why. People who use uh, phytocannabinoids, phytocannabinoids are cannabinoids found in plants. So phyto, right? Phytocannabinoids, whether it's hemp or or marijuana. People who use phytocannabinoids uh, theoretically eat more food. It stimulates appetite. Mm-hmm. And when we do studies, the small studies that we do have show that they do eat more food. But we also find that they're not fatter. And we also find that they have less instances of... Mm. Uh, uh, of uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So there may be some weight loss, subtle weight loss effects that come from- Which is going to get exaggerated by companies, I'm sure. Of course, of course, because of the energy regulation. Learning and memory. This This is a big one. 
your brain's ability to forget is an important part of your brain's ability to remember. If your brain doesn't forget really well, it actually makes it difficult for you to remember important things. Mm. And so this system, this is why if you do too much, uh, like THC, it affects short-term memory. So if you yeah. smoke a shit ton of weed, and this is a fact, so you know, I know the potheads are like, doesn't affect my memory. Shut up. <laughs> yes, it does. Its studies are pretty conclusive. Mm. You Wait, start what to talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what'd you say? It does uh, affect short-term memory, but uh, but this is an but this is an important thing that the brain does. Other cannabinoids actually help the brain utilize uh, uh, or, or or helps the brain utilize its own natural cannabinoids better, though. So, THC not so much. CBD, CBG, CBC, some of the other cannabinoids found in uh, hemp, especially in hemp, help the brain utilize its own natural cannabinoids. A little bit better. This is why studies show that when people use a lot of THC, but also combine it with a lot of CBD or other phytocannabinoids, the memory loss effects are not nearly as profound. In fact, there was one study that shows that there were mm. almost no memory loss effects. And it's because those cannabinoids uh, help your body use its own cannabinoids. It doesn't cause the same types of problems. Emotion regulation. That's another one. Your cannabinoids help you regulate things like happiness, motivation, um, uh, this is also why, uh, if you overdo it on certain phytocannabinoids like THC, eventually you lose motivation, but initially you may actually gain it. You ever hear stoners say, oh, if I, you know, have some weed or whatever, right. it motivates me or whatever. Um, I get this from, um, using, Sativa. Uh, no, I actually get this consistently from using, uh, hemp oil, full spectrum hemp oil extract, like from net. So if I mm. use that, I find, um, I actually feel, uh, of more motivation, whereas with I use cannabis, I think THC is the one that can really cause problems if you over um, overdo it. So it's pretty interesting stuff when you mm. when you learn about this that this is a very complex system, and the way it works in the brain and in the body is it acts like a regulator. So if your if your body is using its cana- its natural cannabinoids <coughs> optimally, then you're going to get the right amount of forgetting. Or remembering, you're going to get the 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 right amount of you know pain regulation, energy regulation. You get the right amount of motivation and mood. You're going to get the 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 right amount of inflammation. Uh, you know, all those things. Mm. So um, you know, word of caution for people utilizing a lot of uh, THC, which has its own benefits, can actually cause problems. But using some of the other cannabinoids may actually right. um, help your uh, enhance your body's ability to regulate and use. These Sounds things. like you need to use you know a whole host of, of these cannabinoids, not just yeah focus on the one. Totally. The, now the the THC does it also have estrogenic effects? Like you know if you use chronic use, there may be in animal studies. Too much. I 100% believe this. I think so. I mean, that's just my expectation. When I was going through the, you know, coming off of testosterone and I could feel how sensitive like my my hormone levels were and I could feel how high my estrogen was, my my gyno was was constantly flaring up, I would notice whenever I had like four days in a row of like smoking, especially if I did like a weekend where I was just we were out doing something and I smoked all day. It was a day off somewhere or whatever. I would notice that it would flare up my gyno really bad, mm-hmm. and then I would notice if I would stayed away from it for a week or longer, it would completely suppress it. Dude, mm-hmm. so studies are mixed on this. Um, I did a lot of research on this, and studies are mixed. Some studies show lowering of testosterone effects and possible estrogenic effects in humans. Other studies show there is no effects. Animal studies are consistent. Animal studies show that that utilizing too much THC um, has estrogenic effects and testosterone lowering effects in uh, in animals. Um, I notice the same thing, Adam. If I go deep on on cannabis, I feel um, estrogenic uh, side effects. I don't get that from again the non psychoactive cannabinoids. Uh, like if I use lots of hemp yeah. extract. I don't. It's only THC. Right. Yeah, it's only when I smoke. So even like and my have, stoner friends could benefit from you know adding in like the the full spectrum. Probably because products. because cannabis has been bred to be. Well, you're the one that got me to start doing like the one to one ratio. Yes, yes. Because what happens with the plant, the marijuana plant, is it's not like you could boost THC and it not affect the other the other cannabinoids. The more THC a, a, a marijuana plant has, the less 
the of the other cannabinoids it has. It's right. like you're it's like you're pulling from you're isolating it. Well, it's like you're pulling from a bucket a, a number of a hundred. So you got to allocate some of it here and there. And the more you allocate to THC, the less you get of the other stuff. Right. So because people like to smoke weed that makes them high, and breeders have been breeding. You know, now when you go to the dispensary. Every single strain is over 20%. Right. Five years ago when I went to the dispensary, there would be like one strain yeah. that was over 20%. Oh, yeah. They're squeezing the shit out of them, and now they have less of these other cannabinoids, and I think that's a that's a, a big mistake. And I think the therapeutic long-term kind of benefits for people just wanting to improve certain aspects of their health, they're going to get it from the non-psychoactive because they don't get the side effects, right? They're going to mm -hmm. get it from the... That's why I think uh, the future of cannabinoid for health is not going to be CBD extract. It's going to be full spectrum, you know, cannabinoid uh, type extracts uh, with no or very, very low THC. It's so funny because if you were to find it in nature a hundred years ago, it wouldn't look like the way it looks today. No. It uh, would be way more balanced. It's already naturally balanced. Yeah. It would be way more balanced and you would see uh, le levels of like nine to 12% THC. And the way people used it. So the way people smoked uh, marijuana back then was they smoked the whole plant. So you get, you get, right. your, you get your weed, it would have the stem, it'd have the fucking, all, everything in there, the leaves and the bud. So when you're smoking it, it's like 9%. THC. Well, it's funny because anecdotally, I've listened to like some of these old guys from the 70s and they're like, this is nothing like what we used to smoke back in the day. Yeah, you're you know? a fool. When they say that, they're ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. They've, yeah. they've got th th that stuff back in the days was nowhere near. There's like school. nothing in it. If yeah. you're comparing the high, that is. Right, right. Yes, right. Like right. if you're comparing like the, the feeling of how strong it is, which is what most stoners or weed smokers are talking about when they talk about how amazing weed is. Well, if it doesn't get stronger than what it is today, no. I mean, what it is today is not consistently. I'm sure there were strains back then that you'd have to, you could find that were high, but they were rare. And again, the way people smoked weed for thousands of years, you go back to China, you go to the Middle East, they didn't just smoke the the bud, they smoked everything. And when you do yeah, that, the stem and everything, yeah, because the rest of the plant has uh, is higher in other cannabinoids and lower in THC. M most of the THC, the highest concentrations in the bud. Mm -hmm. So what do we do now, right? We breed the shit out of it to make it squeeze out hella THC, and then we throw the the leaves and the stems out and only smoke the bud because that's what everybody wants. They want to get high now. No, I think that the future of, of therapeutic use is this full spectrum kind of use, unless you're trying to do like specific, right. you know, very very pointed high kind of uses. quality. Yeah, 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 full spectrum. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, another thing I read too was another. Uh, there was a great article on um, lifting weights, muscle. And um, longevity. I took actually took down some notes because I want to not not miss any of this. But this article was really, really uh, um, it was interesting, and it was a little different than what I've read uh, before. So this was published in Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise, and they found that people with low muscle strength were more than twice as likely to have died during a follow up period of the study than those with normal muscle strength. So they did this long study. They analyzed you know hundreds of thousands of people, uh, controlled a lot of different factors. And people with low muscle strength d double the rate of all-cause mortality. Double. Um, they also found in this study that um, although muscle mass has a protective effect if you're sick, let's say you're in the hospital and you you know you can't eat or whatever, having a lot of muscle mass kind of just gives you a, a little bit of a you know there's more of it to lose because when you're bedridden you lose a lot of muscle. So yeah, muscle can protect you in that way. But what they found in these studies was that most of the, the health benefits that came from uh, muscle wasn't from the mass of the muscle. It was all about the strength. It's mm. all about being stronger. So oh, they that's interesting. interesting. So yeah. they controlled for body weight, muscle mass, all that stuff. And, uh, and they said, oh, it's mostly the strength. It's mostly the strength that gives. And if you think about it, that's the functional aspect of, mm -hmm. you know, of muscle. And in, in this one, they found that the, uh, there was a study done um, in Australia. That analy they analyzed data from 80,000 adults in England and Scotland, and they found that those who reported doing any strength training at all, so even like a little bit, were 23% less likely to die during the study period and 31% less to die of cancer. Hmm. So, um, wow. So, did they? I mean, did they follow these people for 60 years or something like what? long time? Wow, yeah, yeah, long time. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and so, um, now these are surveys, uh, so it's hard to, to tease out and control, you hmm. know, because they're not super controlled, right? But this one just mirrors every other damn study that's that right now is coming out on 
strength training. The the, the cancer risk uh, drop, I think, is fen- phenomenal. Well, just I mean, it, it makes logical sense in terms of fragility. If I if I'm like a super weak and like I, it just feels like you know my immune system, and everything else is like suppressed, where I'm more susceptible to anything that sort of comes my way versus like like strong, healthy, like at like everything, all the systems are working a lot better. Well, yeah, to strength. your to your point, Justin, I, I think we always we look at like you know, the, the muscular system when we talk about strength training, but it's affecting a lot of other systems of the right. body. Everything. One system's down, then, you know, it pulls on the other one. Right. So I, I think we, we, we tend to think, oh, lift weights, and we think just the, the aesthetics or the, the body, the outside, but there's so much that's happening on the inside that you're doing by training that way, just by pushing the heart rate like that, just by building building muscle like that, in, speeding your metabolism. There's so many different positive things that you're doing internally that I'm sure helps. When, when you get stronger appropriately, and what I mean by appropriately is not uh, you know, pushing your strength through anabolic steroid use or through unhealthy practices, but when you get stronger, physically stronger appropriately, your body becomes stronger generally. Right. Mm-hmm. You know more, what I'm saying? More resilient. When yeah. you become weaker physically, um, you become weaker generally. Weaker immune system, weaker emotionally, you know how many times I would train female clients and the thing that they would comment about their strength training that they liked the most was that they just, they just felt more solid. And I don't mean physically solid. They like just confidence felt confidence-wise? Confidence yeah. and just more solid. I or men or the male clients that I would train and how they would feel more uh, balanced and solid in their emotional state. It's a general effect that you get. So strength, physical strength contributes to general overall strength in all aspects and, and and vice versa so yeah and that's what these studies are are, are kind of showing so right right any, anyway justin what's going on with uh your rat infestation that you've <laughs> had going on i mean we well, haven't we haven't touched bases on that in a while i haven't well, heard you first say anything of all, uh, that that whole experiment with the cat thing kind of foiled oh yeah what's where's your cat us. Gone, dude. <laughs> Hit the road, man. Like he just took off on oh, us. Oh, really? Yeah, I was kind of bummed about it because I I thought it like was him. a cool idea. Well, I knew nothing about him. I mean, he's a feral cat. He's like hissed at us when we'd get too close. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like a pet. Or Crazy. You can't like seem to hold on to pussy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, such is life, right? It just shows it in so many levels. He's just um, not good with it. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks for adding salt to the mix, there, Adam. Uh, I feel yeah. like Adam would have kept that. I, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. These days, that cat ain't going these nowhere. Days, these, that these cat ain't cats going are, nowhere. They're slipping through the cracks right in front of your eyes, bro. <laughs> that cat wait, would have brought. Wait, that cat would have brought more cats over. That's right. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> I don't That's know what right. it is. I got one pussy. This now is I got so ten. weird. Uh, there's a whole colony now, like <laughs> meowing at me. So, uh, so you lost your pussy. So I lost my else. pussy. Uh, it, <laughs> that sounds weird, but it's true. Um, and and so they're just they're they're still there. The, the rats are still like the secret, all over the place. You get the secret of Nim at your house, yeah. bro. <laughs> I mean, I've had measures where like I wasn't going to talk about this because of you know the potential PETA people, but hey. Tough, like I, I mean, I'm I'm shooting them now. You know, I'm I'm going what? after. Them. Yeah. What? Yeah. What are you shooting uh, them with? Because they won't die from the traps, dude. I got like this BB gun, and I'm like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm t- I thought I'm he was like, a, I think he's like a gun gun. <laughs> no, no, no. My, I think my neighbors would have a problem <laughs> with that. But uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I'm taking extreme measures here because there's just, I mean, they're all over the place. And so like what we found was we were, we were trying to feed this cat to come back. (laughs) They thought that we were feeding them. So they were like all kind of, you know, gathering together every time, like I'd walk out of my house, they're all coming to see what they have for dinner tonight, you know, little pets. So I stopped, I stopped putting food there and all that. And so I went and we, we just went to get pumpkins with the kids. And so the first time, uh, uh, my youngest, he, he went on this like field trip and got a pumpkin, brought it back. The rats ate it. They, they ate his pumpkin. What? Yeah. Like, w- like you go outside and it's just like, like, like they, or- they chewed through the entire thing and it rot like in front. So we just went again. And, and so that both my, my kids got like the big size pumpkin. I got like kind of a smaller one. And of course, like I go out and mine's yeah. one that they attacked and they bur- burrowed through, chewed through the whole thing. And so anyways, like that was just a little more insult to the whole Dude, thing. Dude, you need to make an explosive me. pumpkin. I just, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do something to it. I just sent a link over to the, the, the group thread and... And I don't. You got to go get one of these, man. Because uh, why not? It's a it's a fully automatic CO two BB gun. 
Oh. So it's like, you know, you get the full. <laughs> yeah, I had the pump yeah. one because I was like trying to also, nah, the whole bro. safety thing you with the kids. It. And I'm just like, hey, you know, I was like showing them how to do it. But like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Doug, show them what time aggro. it is. You see the link. To, I just sent it over to you guys. Bro, yeah. So, so oh, I'm going to go country on these no, things. No, here's what I think you need Listen to do. Listen to this. Look at this. Oh, yeah, look at that. The top left. Yeah, air oh, gun. Oh, sick. Oh, fuck yeah. How much is that one, Doug? What does that say there? $149. That's it. Bro, you got that, Justin. You know what we should do? Order that shit now. Get that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post up, dude, in my backyard. Dude, right? Dude, yeah. You, you, you got to get yourself a Doug. Is what you need to do. Ah, uh, yeah, that's Doug, true. Because Doug's have, going ham out here. We have a mouse mice. problem in here every once in a while, and Doug has uh, killed. I don't know, twelve, fifteen. Yeah, probably about fifteen. Yeah, happy, happily, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Happily. I mean, I'm not happy, but I'm He's happy. The mouse when murderer. I'm successful, I they, guess, because dude, I tell you what, man, they do not like you, Doug. They are scared of the dog. You they should do like peanut butter. Oh yeah, peanut butter, right? You should yeah. get a couple of them and stuff them like a scarecrow, you know, and sit and plot them around the house, oh, yeah. plot them around the studio. <laughs> mount them to our like, wall. Choke you would like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's <laughs> Let's not do that, dude. dude. Speaking of scared of shit, this this morning, uh, you know, <laughs> Jessica. No, no, this was last night. I, I'm laying in bed and we're you know getting ready to watch a little TV before going to bed, and Jessica like walks into the bathroom and fucking screams and runs away yeah runs away out of the bathroom and so i'm like is there a burglar in the shower like yeah. what the hell is going on and yeah. she's like a spider like, oh my god dude what did the spider look like was it big enough to scream i mean it, look it was, i'll be honest with you it's <laughs> yeah, a decent sized spider about that big uh, okay but i'm like what are you running away for yeah. <laughs> what's it gonna do <laughs> dude that's gonna ironic because that literally happened i was sitting taking a shit and then i got up and i'm like you know doing my thing this is really graphic, but like, so I look over at, at the shower curtains right next to me, right? And I'm kind of brush into it and there's this huge spot on it. And I look up and it was like one of those wolf spiders that was like, oh. huge. yeah, had, it was like a couple inches big. And I, I just was like, whoa, you know, and Courtney's like, what, what, what? Like she freaks out because I don't follow that up with like, oh my God, there's a, I'm just like looking at it, you know, and like processing it. <laughs> and she comes in like she freaks out. And so I had to like, Smash the hell out of that, but it was like right hold, next to my arm. Hold on a second. Time. Hold on a second. You took a shit. Yeah. So you sat in there. I was sitting in there, and it was right the, next to me. Made the bathroom yeah. toxic, like you, you do. It didn't die. And then you yell. It didn't die. No, then you yell, didn't. and no. Courtney will, runs in there. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Uh, this is a She's, regular occurrence. She's like, ooh, ah, oh, yeah. like a double. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can see why you said that. Ooh, oh. <laughs> okay, all right. You got a handle. I'm out of here. I can see yeah. what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dude, you guys got me on that show, uh, that uh, series on HBO. Which right, one? Righteous Gemstones. Oh, finally, you all. Finally, we're all on the same show, dude. It's so How, good, right? Isn't that the best? Like such good satire. It's so, so not. Funny. It's so not, but it so is. Like it's. It's, so I, it's my favorite show to watch. It's so when ridiculous. I'm, yeah, it's yeah, over it's, the top. It's over the top. It's not like. Uh, it's not incredibly written or amazing storyline behind it or whatever. No, it's just it, fun. I just don't think there's anything been that there's nothing like it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nobody has done something like this. And so and I was like, oh wow, I can't believe they're doing something. I just like that they make fun of these like you know, that that's a whole branch of that that was like waiting to get made fun of, you know, the televangelists and yeah. then also the Joel Steens of the world and yeah. all these people that are like the mega church thing. But, like it's uh, it it nails it, dude. HBO's got the best writers because yeah. they, they, I don't know how they make these people such despicable people that are likable. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you like them, at the, you want them to do, you want them to win, even though they're bad. Yeah, they're not good. You know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, HBO does yeah. a great job with that. I'm yeah. on like uh, the fifth episode or whatever. And I told you I guys that I've been. My going parents through. definitely would not like that show. Yeah, no, I don't think my parents <laughs> would like that show either. The, the H HBO and Showtime. I've been on that kick for a minute, man. Yeah. You know, speaking of TV, this is my mm. literally right now favorite time of the year. NBA started yesterday. You've got the Boring. World Series going on right now. You've boring. got hockey going on. Uh, hockey yeah. going on right now. And you've got NFL going on right now. Oh, it's a lot the of boring. best it's like time. the Bermuda Triangle of Awesome. Oh, it's the yeah. best time to watch no, television. I'm with you right on now. that, Adam, yeah. for sure. Oh. Triangle has three points. He named four. Well, fine. <laughs> so it's like the Bermuda Square. <laughs> yeah, technically. <laughs> yeah, it's a parallelogram. <laughs> All right, dude. Yeah. First question is from Pure Warrior 247. What's the difference between grass-fed meat and wild game meat? Nothing. 
Well, <laughs> thanks. Well, moving I mean, on. Well, I mean, I there's, mean a, there's, a, there's a lot different. There's a there's a big difference between grass fed and grain or wild and grain, but grass fed and wild is pretty much the same thing. Well, here's the reason why it's different. Uh, they move a lot because well, grass fed meat that you buy that you like, you know, like for example, your butcher box delivers to your door. It's grass fed beef. There isn't wild. Is there wild cows? That you can get? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what That's saying? what I'm they saying. They get eaten by wolves. I would think. You imagine a cow wild in the wild? Cows. They're terrible. Yeah. What a terrible yeah, animal. Name, name yeah. a single. Name one animal that you could buy grass fed, or you could buy wild pig. Yeah, yeah, but I'm okay, fi- that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, did you guys know if you take but it turns into a, a hairy hog? It does. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know if you took a, a and they're domestic- crazy right now in Texas? You guys know this? You can actually like fly a helicopter and shoot them with assault rifles. And, and, and you it's can do legal. It, you can also do it out of a, a, like a good a hot air balloon. <laughs> they let you do it out of a hot air balloon now. Is this all yeah. real? The true story. Yeah, dude. Because they have so many feral hogs. So why haven't we done this? Do I don't why know. It sounds like an adventure to me. Why you- haven't we done this? Yeah. Would you not well, want to do that? Have you ever gone hunting? I, have, I think we start, but there. not like with a like a semi-automatic gun and after yeah. pigs. I mean, it's a little that sounds a lot of it's fun. It's a little crazy, but uh, we maybe we fun. start yeah. with the rats first. Yeah, start with the rats. Start anyway, with your start automatic. Start small. Get- we'll get the yeah. We'll anyway, work our way up. So, no, um, yeah. If you take a if you take a domestic pig and you put it out in the wild, it turns feral. Like the switch turns on and right. it actually becomes a crazy fucking uh, like a like a boar almost. Okay, right. so besides Gross tusks and all that. Yeah. So besides the hog. What else animal would could be grass fed or wild? Oh, that we eat both. Yeah, that we eat both. We nah, don't really. I, it's, no. it's it's normally you're normally comparing grass fed to grain or wild yeah. to grain. Right? Yeah. So yeah. here's the thing with wild game meat. Um, why and and I guess bison would be the closest to uh, beef, right? Bison is is wild. Yeah. And that would be um uh, you know that'd be about as close as you can get to uh, to cow at least. In fact, if you eat bison, it almost tastes uh, the same. But wild meat um, is just got uh, a, a healthier fatty acid profile. It's more nutrient dense. Flavor flavor wise, have you guys you guys have heard the term something tastes gamey? Yeah. yeah. There's a flavor that natural. Um, I'm using the word natural, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. There's there's a flavor that natural wild meat has um, that domesticated grain fed meat. Uh, doesn't have. Oh, there's a there's a clear distinction between grain and wild or grain and grass. But I, I and maybe there is uh again, I I don't have an example of a meat that I've had that is I've had wild and I've also had only grass fed. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think grass fed has like, that that it has a different taste in comparison to grain fed meat. I it's mean, a little bit it's like um it's in between it's not straight it's not gamey yeah. like you're eating venison. It's but it's not a purely like the grain fed like beef. Right. It's it, it's just a, a hint of the gaminess. Yeah, like venison and elk, like I've had that before and I like the taste it's definitely way different than than like a, any kind of a livestock animal. Mm-hmm. It's got a little bit of that ga- a tiny bit of that gaminess. Well, you have to explain for people so they understand because this was like I remember um, the first time I fully understood this, and it's I didn't. This was until maybe six years ago, maybe five, six years ago, when I started looking for more grass fed. Is I didn't understand uh, what that meant that it changed the fatty acid profile and mm-hmm. why that was important to you. Because when you talk about somebody who is uh, trying not to, uh, you know, is fighting inflammation or you're trying to get uh, healthier fats in your diet. Uh, it's kind of canceled out when you go and you get like grain fed beef. A little bit. Like if you if you do if you eat meat every once in a great while, it's not gonna make a difference. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you eat like if you eat one steak or burger patty or whatever once a week or less, um, it's probably not gonna make that huge of a difference. Now, there's an argument that says that you will see a difference over time. So let's say you eat red meat once a week, but you do it for twenty years or thirty years. Then yeah, there may be this kind of cumulative effect, but especially if you eat a lot of meat. Like if you're like me, I eat red meat five to seven days a week, at least five to seven days a week. Um, some week I go for weeks on end well, and, or seven days a week. And natural meats or, or wild or grass fed meat, it has to. It, it's supposed to have a balanced fatty acid it's, profile it, of six, three, and nine. It's got a better. Much better, much more balanced uh, fatty acid uh, profile, and it makes a difference when. It makes a big difference when you're consuming a lot of it. It's higher in CLA. CLA is a fatty acid that, I mean, bodybuilders have supplemented with CLA for like two decades. 
CLA is what they would refer to as the fat, uh, burning fat. And they find that diets that are higher in it, when the calories are equal, uh, that they tend to be leaner and have more muscle. So this is why bodybuilders will supplement. It doesn't work that way, though. You don't just add CLA to your diet and get the effects. You have to replace other fatty acids with it. Well, I, I told you I remember reading an article a few years back that uh, the uh, they actually compete with each other in the cell. So yeah. if, you know, and I'll just use round numbers for the average person to kind of get this concept that if your cell could only hold a uh, 100 um, fatty acid profiles in it, right? And you they, they're made up of six, three, and nine are getting in there. And you can't just throw more of something else on it. Right. right, and, right. And, and actually, six and nine uh, will outdo or, or outperform the three. So if you're getting, an, uh, like, if you're getting 75 and 75, you'll get all 75 of the six and nine, and then you'll just only get, get 15 or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, 25, right. 25. Of, 25 of the three. <laughs> I failed math. <laughs> that was bad. So I, I, that's, I know that's not the, uh, I, I know that's not the most yeah, it's much sci- more complex sci- than yeah, that. scientific way to explain it, but for the a- average listener to, to get an idea of the importance of that. And we know how important omega-3s mm-hmm. are and that is something that we're always trying to search for or most people and almost the uh almost everybody gets recommended that supplement it's right? just it's high- rare that people are getting enough omega-3 yeah. in their diet and so when you're eating a meat that mm-hmm. should already naturally have it in that yeah that would be great except for if you're always eating meat that is grain fed all the time you're actually it's the profiles change it's higher on the six and nines lower on the threes so you're getting an abundance of the six and nines, which are not ideal, and you're getting less of the threes, which is more ideal. Balance is ideal. It's too much of one, not enough of another is is not um, a good idea, especially when it's when you're talking about um, six and nines. And some people, there are uh, segments of the population that are very sensitive to this. So if they eat a lot of red meat that's gra- that's grain fed, they'll see that their lipid profiles go crazy. And this is why when they reduce their red meat consumption, their lipid profiles look better. I would surmise that a lot of these people, rather than having to eliminate red meat, switch to grass fed. Switch to grass fed. And I've seen this in clients before. Have you? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. they'll get a better uh, yes. fatty acid. Pro- they'll get a better lipid Same thing profile. for people that feel like, you know, uh, inflammation or they feel bloated from eat- eating meat a lot of times. And I find out that they're eating all grain fed meat and then have them try grass fed, mm. you know, or switch over to like a bison or something. I notice a big difference. That's my, that's for me. So if I eat, uh, a lot of uh, of grain fed beef. Let's say I'm trying to gain size, and so I'm adding a lot of meat into my diet because of the calories and all that stuff. I do notice an increase in inflammation when it's grass fed. I don't. This is my own personal experience, and that inflammation contributes to worse gut health for me, at least. So I digest grass fed meat better when I'm eating high quantities. They're also higher in key micronutrients. Now, again, it's not this dramatic, massive difference, but it's enough of a difference to where, again, if you consume a lot of red meat, if you consume it all the time, it will it will definitely make a difference for you to consume that meat as a high quality grass fed. Yeah, I assume that like even just having the chickens graze around my property and everything, and in terms of like uh, the color and 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 what the yolk looks like and and how rich it, it feels like uh, the micronutrients are in, in comparison to something that was store bought. Uh, to me, it just I mean, there's little things like that that if you start to kind of like put two and two together with like an animal that's out there like working for their food and getting it from like so many varied sources, like how much more diverse that would be nutrient. Yeah. Now eating always eating wild game meat is. Probably for everybody's probably not possible. Well, yeah, it's not realistic because there's too many people, and, and we would make animals instinct. Yeah, we just, can't all like yeah. <laughs> if we wanted to move in that direction, that wouldn't work out very well. No, for us. we just have too many people. But factory farming with the feeding these animals grain all the time is not awesome. It's no. it's like you're you're it's like the, the processed virgi- version of beef. Like these animals are cramped. They're standing in their own poop. They're just yeah. eating grain. And when you have a, an unhealthy animal, the meat is just not its not as healthy. So it makes sense that you're not going to be as healthy eating that kind of meat. Yeah. Grass-fed, now don't get me wrong, you could probably construct a factory farming model that looks identical to the grain-fed model and throw grass at these animals. But oftentimes, the way that they feed these cows is they roam, they eat foods that's more natural to their body. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and, the, and so it's, it's also more humane. It's also better... 
um, for the environment. And they're good for the environment. They produce own ecology. They produce less uh, methane when they eat grass versus when they eat. uh, I think that's the gas that the cows produce. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Then when they produce uh, when they eat grain. So it's like if you eat a a particular type of food that makes you gassy. Grain-fed beef is more gassy, so they produce more of those, the, the, you know, those byproducts. Um, it's also better for the environment in terms of the ecology and the way that they're, you know, they have to take care of the the, the land so that it's producing quality grass that the animals can eat. It's just better all the way around, and it is more expensive if you go to the store, uh, you know. But you know, we live in a, a pretty wealthy society. And I don't know of a better place to invest money than in your health. I really don't. You're gonna. You're, there's almost nothing you'll get better return on. It's really not that more expensive when you go through someone like ButcherBox. That's, that's one of the, true. That's one of the reasons why. And I know you referenced them. That I, I think it's amazing uh, what they do because when you look at what you're getting by having it shipped to your house, and I know that grass fed is typically more expensive. It's really not that more expensive than me going down to the butcher and actually getting the meat. Oh there, yeah. So. Well, I mean, we'll probably cover this in more detail down the road. But like the, how they got started was what I basically was doing with with my wife. We would go in on a cow together with a couple families right. and and buy, you know, straight from the source or like from a 4-H uh, you know, group that they they like raised it all humanely and went through that whole process and it was great. Especially mm-hmm. when you guys factor in the things that they always do. Did you see what they're doing this month? What they're giving away? Uh, no. You know how every month they always have some cool like special for someone who gets on their subscription base? Right. This, this month is a turkey, dude. A whole oh, turkey, yeah, I right? Did it's see a whole that. turkey, right? I'm Doug? so doing this. Yeah, yeah, ten to fourteen pound turkey, free. Yeah, free for with your when when you sign up with them. Yes. Oh well, Thanksgiving's Dude. coming up. That makes yeah. sense. No, Perfect. I know. Isn't that cool? Wow, that's a great. Yeah, that's a, if you if you factor in all the free shit that they give away every month, um, you're you're actually saving money. Yeah. Uh, with someone like them. Next question is from Tara Rickner. What's the point of chasing a pump? Does it promote more strength or muscle growth long term? You know what's funny is uh, I love that some bodybuilding wisdom is bullshit, but a lot of it has got some truth. Now the way they explain it, um, maybe not, maybe the way they explain it isn't accurate, but the the gist of it comes out to be true. And for a long time, bodybuilders before any science supported what they said, for a long time, bodybuilders talked about how the pump was uh, a, a, an important part of building muscle. Um, Arnold talked about it famously oh, in Pumping Iron. He says better than coming. He compared it to yeah. to to coming. And, the, and I remember the first time I saw that, I was like 13 like, years old. Like, and I was like, whoa, what does he mean? What the fuck's what going that, on here? What is that? I've never had that kind of a workout. But anyway, <laughs> um, but bodybuilders a long time have talked about the pump. Now, there's two mechan- – and, and, and here's the thing. Science is supporting this, okay? There's two reasons why the pump contributes to muscle growth um, uh, and strength. One is the conditions that produce the best pump – also produce more muscle and more strength. So what I mean by that is if you're well-rested, well-hydrated, and you have good pro, uh, programming and a good diet, you're going to get better pumps in the gym. Uh, this is a fact. You know, j- Hydration alone. Like if you Make sure you drink a lot of water throughout the day before your workout. I would argue that's one of the biggest things. Makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, makes a huge, diet is another one. If your carbohydrates are nil yeah. um, or your diet is just too low in calories, your pump uh, suffers. I used to teach this all the time to people that were taking all these like NO2 and all the pump like supplements out there. I'm like, try loading up more carbs. So if you first you have to know where you're at, right? So everybody needs to find a baseline first of where your you know typical carb uh, day looks like, like how many grams mm-hmm. of carbs you're eating in a day and about how many you have normally consumed before your workout. And then the same thing goes for water. Double that one day before you go work out. And watch what happens. Double your water, double your carbs, go Mm -hmm. get your workout. You'll have the most massive pump you've ever had in your life. It'll shit on any supplement you've ever done. The pump boosting supplements are such almost all a waste of money. It's like the the Arginine, you know, remember when people take tablets of Arginine throughout the day, they call it NO, you know, booster or whatever. Well, 70% of your your muscle belly is made up of water. It's made up of non-muscle fiber structures. Uh, There's there's all kinds of things in the muscle that make up the the size of your muscle. Um, They refer to that as the the sarcoplasm within muscle. And- uh, there's a debate about this, but I, I I think the science supports the fact that the sarcoplasm in the muscle can actually increase through training the pump. So the more you you can give your body a pump, 
the more sarcoplasm you have, you have within a muscle, the larger the volume of it is. See, I, I feel my theory is that the the more you train the pump like that, the more the body adapts to get a get a bigger pump. So yeah, because more sarcoplasm. Right. I don't know if that's the reason why it is yeah, or yeah, not, but yeah. for sure, I think there's value to it. But there's also some detriments to training this way all the time. Because, like anything. And this is what I we talked a little bit with Brett Contreras uh, the other day about this. I was saying that, man, I remember I used to train always chasing the pump and I never strength trained. And one of the things I noticed is I definitely got to a point where I trained my body to be able to get these great pumps. I mean, I would feel like I could air up in the gym and look like a total different human being. Now, mind you, I'm 6'3", 200 something pounds. So I'm a lot longer, taller, uh, and, and over overall surface mass that I have in comparison to probably somebody who's five six or five eight, so air me all the way up, and of course I'm going to look a lot bigger. But I would deflate all the way down, and I feel like oh my god, I would look like somebody who didn't even really work out. And then I get in the gym and look like a monster. Then I started strength training, and I when I and when I, by strength training I'm talking lifting three to five reps. I never did that before, or even singles or doubles that just didn't exist in the first decade of training mm -hmm. for me, and. I started to build a different looking type of muscle in my mm -hmm. body. And it's so hard for me to put words to it. But the best way that I can explain it is when I'm not in the gym and I'm not lifting, I look more muscular now because I strength trained. And I, I, I may not have as massive of the pumps as I was having before because I have a nice even balance. But before, I'd get these great pumps. They look amazing in the gym, but then I would get really flat looking and I wouldn't look very muscular where when I started to incorporate strength training, now I had this denser kind of look to me. Yeah, there's there's the, the pump contributes to muscle growth just like training for strength, which doesn't produce a good pump, uh, contributes to muscle growth. If you focus only on one, you're missing out on one of the factors. And I think that's what you're kind of communicating. Like if all you ever do is chase the pump, you're missing out on the type of training that doesn't typically produce a great pump, which is the you know, one to five reps, long rest period, powerlifting style training. I would argue there's a lot of individual variants too here. Like there's there's probably, probably there's a probably genetic variant. yeah there's probably people that and I think this is also part of the problem is somebody does one or the other they respond really well and then they kind of neglect the other yeah, one. Yeah. You know, you have a somebody who's heavy into strength training and that's built lots of muscle for them and they look great and so they're like oh this is the answer for me I always train this way. Or you have you know the bodybuilder type who mm -hmm. follow the bodybuilder routine, gets the pumps, feels amazing, built muscle yep. doing that, and so they neglect the other. And the truth is, both of them have yeah, that to was be. That's probably in the gym. me. I used to hate. I used to hate when my muscles would get like too big and tight, and it would feel like I was like incapable of doing uh, all these athletic moves. Like it was like inhibiting my performance, and so I like avoided a lot of those uh, rep ranges and uh, supersetting and things like that because it was just like ah, like it, it felt like it was like deterring Dude. me from success. You're 100 percent right. I trained. Uh, I've trained rock climbers and. Um, uh, motorcycle, uh, what do they call motocross racers? Oh yeah, and both of them when they would hire me, I've trained several of them. Both categories when they come and hire me, one of the things that they would say is, "I want to get stronger, but I want to reduce the the how easily I get a pump." Because if you're rock climbing, and your forearms get a pump, you're fucked. Yeah, you're done. If you're motocross racing and your forearms get a pump, you're fucked. So you're absolutely right. Um, and so training for a pump all the time uh, may not be great. For certain, I noticed this in jujitsu and judo. My hands start if my if I'm because you're gripping a lot. My forearms get pumped. It's like that's it. They were, but in the gym, I freaking loved it. Oh yeah, you're looking yeah. at the mirror like whoa, yeah, it's crazy. Looking. But there's other reasons why the pump uh, builds muscle. I, I mentioned the earlier one that it's a signal that the the because the environment is right for a great pump. That environment is the same environment that you build better muscle. But there's also a second reason that the pump builds muscle. As the muscle becomes pumped and swells, it actually sends a signal to the body. To build more muscle, it, it actually spikes uh, protein synthesis within the muscle. So the pump is a is definitely a great thing to look for and to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. I know uh, when I'm getting a great pump, among other things, there's a lot of factors, but I know when I get a great pump, that means that the workout was probably good. That means my sleep was probably good. That means that things are probably working well. I know when my pump isn't good. Actually, in fact, having a tough time getting a pump is a better signal or more accurate signal than getting a pump. Like if I'm lifting weights and I'm not getting a great pump, 
and I think everything's on point, I know like, okay, something's off. Something's right. not right. It's it's not working for me. Well, all of our programs too are, are phased this way, right? So you have a, a phase in every program, like the first phase is focused on strength. You're not really chasing the pump. It's, you know, you're, you're lifting low reps, heavy load, um, and that you're in that phase for three or four weeks. Well, eventually you make it to phase three, which is 100% in like all the programs, you're chasing a pump at that yep, point. Yep, yep. There's a lot of supersets in there. There's a lot of high reps, and this is all going to cause that. So absolutely value to it. Um, it's something that you, I think we would encourage somebody to do, but there's- But don't you, live there. Yeah, don't live there. Phase phase in and out of it, just like yep. we, we recommend to phase in and out of uh, any sort of uh, training modality. Next question is from S. Miller, UK24. What effect does consistent resistance training have on type 1 diabetics? Mm, resistance training, um, besides diet, uh, when you compare it to other forms of exercise. Oh, it regulates insulin re better, right? Resistance training is the best form of exercise uh, to, um, to positively impact um, type 1 and type 2 diabetes because muscle is a very insulin-sensitive tissue. I mean, the main, the main way your body stores glycogen, for example, is in the liver. The other way is in your muscle. And when you lift weights, you become far more sensitive to insulin and you become better at utilizing carbohydrates. It's way better than cardio. In fact, now cardio does a good, all exercise has a positive effect, but resistance training, because of the increase in muscle mass, has the best effect uh, in my experience on both of these. So here's what happens with type 1 diabetics in my experience. And I'm not a doctor. This is just based off of my experience training clients who are type 1 diabetics and working with their doctors. Now type 1 diabetics are people who don't make insulin. So they're the ones that have to inject insulin into the body um, when they eat you know, carbohydrates or whatever, and they have to monitor their blood sugar. Typically, they, lose, they have to end up using less insulin is what ends up happening. Um, because their body becomes so much more sensitive to insulin, that less insulin is needed to produce uh, the same result. Now, with type 2 uh, diabetics, their blood sugar is just regulated amazingly with appropriate and proper resistance training. I don't know why resistance training is not the number one recommended form of exercise for all people with uh, issues with insulin or, or blood sugar. Well, it should be. Ex explain. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you how I used to explain it, and I probably used to do it really bad, so you could probably help me out. But I used to try to explain it, and if you thought of your, your muscles as like these sponges, and the bigger the sponge – the more the more we're going to capture like carbohydrates mm -hmm. and any sort of spillage or over that we do out of the sponge could throw our insulin levels off and make us have to take insulin or whatever. So yeah. if I could build more muscle or more sponges in my body, it gives me more flexibility and less likely of over spillage into my body that would cause me to have to take my insulin. Yeah, that's that's a fair way to I would say explain it. It's it's obviously going to be a lot more complicated than that. Right. But I, that's a fair way. But no studies show that. More muscle mass um, is it, far better. It just in, it just improves insulin sensitivity quite a bit. Your, your insulin is, by the way, one of the number one uh, anabolic hormones in the body. A lot of people don't realize that it's extremely anabolic uh, in the body. Um, so it's like a you know it, it can be used to to build muscle in the right context and all that stuff. But no, muscle is very insulin sensitive. Um, you know, because your tissue, the tissues of your body kind of, they, they are sensitive to specific hormones uh, more so than others. Like, for example, fat is an estrogen uh, sensitive um, uh, tissue. So lots and lots and lots of fat on your body actually uh, causes the body to, to utilize its estrogen a little differently, can even raise estrogen. So like if you look at like young girls who are overweight, they get their periods much earlier. Um, than girls who are normal weight. Uh, men with lots and lots of body fat, you'll see higher estrogen levels. Well, when it comes to muscle, you build muscle and you do it the right way. You're healthy uh, with a good diet, not taking anabolic steroids and all that stuff. You're just you're going to notice that you need less insulin. So if you're type 1, and here's something you want to pay attention to because this is important now, and work with your doctor on this. Tell your doctor, hey, I'm going to start lifting weights. And the reason why this is important because your right amount of insulin will likely change. And you need to know this because too much insulin is not a good thing either. So whatever your normal amount is, as you're lifting weights, could very well become too much. So you want to pay attention to that and see you know, what's happening with your body. So type 2, just to go over that one in terms of like the difference between type 1 and type 2. I know type 2, so you lose sensitivity to insulin. Yeah, so your, your, your body's making insulin, but your body's not 
responding to it. And right, so which, which all the more like reason to exercise. Yeah, both and, both cases, uh, resistance training is uh, is a is a phenomenal a fantastic, benefit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Farmer Pear. Are humans hardwired to be competitive? I definitely think so. What is yeah. so, what is so, yeah, know, to survive? Like, so all, all living beings are. It's so silly that we that people. You know why we, people are asking this question? Because competition has been uh, portrayed negatively. Demonized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, look, every decision you make in life. This, if so, if anyone's arguing this, like, oh, humans are competitive. This is bad for us. No. Every decision that you make in life is based off of a hierarchy. Mm. So if you go right or left, depending when you're driving your car, it's because right is better than left. You pick a shirt out of your drawer, it's because that shirt has a hierarchy. It's higher on the hierarchy than another shirt that you picked. Every time you eat, the names you gave your kids, you know, uh, how you wipe your ass. I don't care what you do, you're making a decision, and that decision is based off of a hierarchy of things. And that means it's competitive. That means that some things are more valued than other things. It's just life. This is just the way it is. So because we value some things over other things, we are going to naturally be competitive. We're always trying to do things that we deem more valuable, and we're also trying to become more valuable to the things that we deem important. Now, the bad side is when your people are competitive to a fault, uh, when it's uh, it's uh, pathological. That, of course, is a problem when you identify with it and you can't handle... I think that the problem with competitiveness becomes when you have an issue with losing. I think that's what the, the problem is, where you're so you're so against losing that you cheat right. or you... I thought you were going to go the, the Darwinism way and, right. and talk about survival that's the fittest. That's sure. Absolutely. Uh, because that's what came to my mind when I read this question is, I mean, yeah, I mean, at one point, you... The, the better fisherman, the better the better hunter, you know, the the better runner, the better all these things was the more likely to survive. And so I think that was we naturally evolved in that in that place. Now we're at a place now where uh, everything seems to be plentiful and it's different. And so, but there's still, I mean, the same the same way that we probably chased after animals to get it to survive is the same way that I feel man does today for for money. Mm-hmm. And for security, I mean, it's the same. It really is a very similar thing. It's just that it's this paper, this paper monetary thing that we can use to go purchase food and purchase things like that. But the same competitive drive that drives us to be more success, more successful, and have more of it is probably the same drive that we've had in us since the beginning of time. When, that- when you make a product, uh, you're competing with other people to provide more value to your consumer. Every time, and that's it, people who think that's a bad thing are, are idiots because the reason why you have such amazing products is because a lot of people uh, were competing to bring you the best, and yeah. you picked whichever one you picked, so you actually rewarded the best competitor. Every time you buy something, every time you make a choice, you're rewarding the person who did the best job. There's nothing wrong with that. Can it be pathological? Absolutely. But yeah, we're absolutely, everything is hardwired. Uh, to be competitive, everything's competing for, you know. Now there's there is, there's an argument that says that uh, you know working together makes us more successful. Absolutely, competition does that too. Yeah. If you want to build a business, good luck doing it by yourself. You're going to need to work with a lot of people to right. co- cooperate so that you can compete with other groups of people who are cooperating. I mean, uh, this is why I love free markets so much. People don't realize this, but free markets. They combine the efforts of millions of people working together without even knowing each other. People from across the world, different religions, different belief systems. They don't even know each other. They're just working together without realizing it to produce uh, the best goods and services and products. It's like that uh, that that one book, uh, I Am Pencil, or the, the video by um, no, Milton Fried- Friedman no. about a pencil, you know. You look at a pencil and you break it down. Like there's not one single person on earth that makes a pencil. There's farmers that grow the, you know, the rubber that makes the eraser or whatever. There's there's the graphite. There's the lead. There's the people who make the paint and there's the people that produce the components that make the paint. All these people, if you really had, to, if you really sat down and added up, will probably account to a million people. Um, they don't know each other, but yet they've cooperated together to become competitive to produce the best. Uh, products. I know we're a hundred percent. We're oh, hardwired yeah. to be competitive because it works. It's always been there. Always will. Do you be think there. it's dangerous and unhealthy? The direction that we, I, I felt like I, I don't know. I have, I haven't heard much of it as much as I did five, 10 years ago of the, 
every kid gets a trophy and there's no totally. – yeah, is that still happening? I mean, are you guys are still got um, your kids in sports. I don't – not definitely not in my – Doesn't it feel like it cooled circle. off? Yeah, well, mainly because – yeah, I mean, there's some of it with the parents that, like, if it's the first time the kid's ever played a sport or whatever and it's like – you know, but the kids themselves, they keep track. Of course. They keep track of how many goals were scored. They keep track if they won or lost, you know, regardless of if you want to like make sure everybody's feelings are accounted for. Uh, this is a this is a display of you know, like adversity and like how, how you deal with that adversity is the the whole lesson. And so to to extract that and be like everybody did well yeah. is bullshit. Oh, it's it's ridiculous. You know how many wonderful lessons there are to teach your kids when they lose? Yeah, that's like you need to lose. Yeah, dude. Otherwise, you're a psychopath. There's some lessons to learn from winning too, like to be humble and to all that stuff. But there's more lessons, in my opinion, to learn from losing. You, you you come back from a game with your kid, yep, and they get their asses kicked. You know, I I you know would do this with my kids when they would compete, whether it be sports or other types of competitions, and they lose. I would think to myself like, okay, this is a wonderful opportunity to communicate and help with the lessons that you learn from losing because you're going. Life, this is the way life is. Again, people mm -hmm. make choices better on what's better than something else, and you're going to not always win 100%. Um, and if you don't learn that as a kid, you're going to have to learn it as an adult. You know what it is? Okay. When a little kid first starts competing and they try their hardest and they lose, it's not uncommon for the kid to cry and scream and be pissed and sure. throw a tantrum, right? So then they learn through time as yeah. a kid how to deal with losing. Yeah. You can't keep doing that when you're 40 years old. Do you know how you, imagine if you never taught that to a kid, if yeah. they never went through that. Yeah. And now they're an adult and uh, then they go on the business world well, and they seen, don't get hired. I've seen some people like that. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some adults out there. Yeah. Yeah. They, they never just lose their shit. They never lo learn to lose. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They are all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.